So we're talking about two things um, when it comes to the referendum. There'll be one question covering two parts. Um, and the question will effectively go like this. When we walk into the polling booth on referendum day, it will effectively be, should we recognise Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as the first peoples of our country? And should there be an Indigenous voice? So we've got to understand that in saying yes to that later on this year we are saying yes to recognition and we are saying yes to a voice the voice is the constitutional recognition that is why the uluru statement from the heart was created um, we asked indigenous peoples what does meaningful constitutional recognition look like to us and we came back and said it's got to be practical it's got to be meaningful it's got to have an impact on the lives of our communities it's got to be the voice if we really value the voice, and we do, as something important for getting information and the perspectives of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to government and to parliament, then it's so important that we protect that voice. And that's what putting this into the constitution does. It makes it a reliable voice going forward because we've seen mechanisms like this come and go. So putting it into the constitution gives protection and certainty for the voice going to the future. I think that's really fundamental, right? Because we talk about truth and frankful advice. The, the ability to be able to speak freely about what is really happening on the ground um, and talk about you know, those solutions. We've seen that those historical mechanisms have no longer exist. And that for me is, well, that sense of stability, that sense of continuity. How do we ever create ongoing and sustainable change if we're continually advocating and fighting for just the establishment of a voice to be heard, right? Which is what we have done, which is what our, our ancestors, our old people have, have done for, for years, for decades. And we need the ability to be able to, to think about change long term. This isn't just for right now, this isn't for the, this generation, you know, it's not for Dean, good ways, love you brother, but it's for the young people who are coming up, who haven't been born yet, right? This is about recognition of them, of valuing them as First Nations people of this country, the responsibility that they hold to carry and continue on that 65,000 years of culture and community. That, that's the thing that I go, it's about, it's about the future, it's about where we're heading. So what we know is that the referendum is the first step of the process, right? It's saying that this voice should exist. It's securing it in the constitution to say that, yep, all right, let's create it. When we talk about how we'll work after, it, it's up to parliament to design the powers, the functions and they have to go through a process like any other piece of legislation and have that conversation with the Australian public. But there are some fundamentals that we know that have been already published by the Australian government around these design principles. And fundamentally, it's that First Nations people will be able to elect our, our representatives. We've never had that before. So having somebody that we can go and we can appoint in our, in our own jurisdictions, our own local spaces, um, to then feed and give, make representations back to parliament and the executive government is the whole basis of it. As Samara says, there are some really clear principles. Firstly, the voice will be represented by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Um, secondly, the members of the voice will be chosen by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. 
Um, we know that there'll be gender equity, so equal male-female uh, representation on The Voice. We know that there'll be provision for young people as well. Um, we know that The Voice will be focused on issues like health, education, housing and jobs. Um, and we know that there are going to be very clear lines of accountability from our members in the community on a day-to-day -day basis and to those members on The Voice. That's the thing that's missing right now. Indigenous people choosing their Indigenous representatives free from any other commitment just to focus on those issues that have a very important impact on the lives of our families and communities. It'll be interesting to see whether we can put in place, put in practice the principle of listening that is so fundamental to The Voice. So our generation here in 2023, we've got the opportunity to open the door for this wonderful mechanism which will adapt and change over time. So let's just listen to what Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people tell us about the best representative structure. And, and this is why the referendum is so important. We've previously left these questions of the design and so forth to just parliaments and governments to make. Um, and we've previously left the question of whether there should be a voice just to parliaments and governments. And over time, as we've seen with all of our uh, previous examples of representative bodies, our previous versions of a voice, what the parliaments and governments can make, they can also abolish. And we've seen that time and time and time again. Not this time. That's why the referendum is so important. Nearly 18 million voting age Australians going to the polls and sending a message, not just to this parliament and government, but future parliaments and governments that says, this issue, this voice, Indigenous peoples having a voice on their issues is important to me. It's important to me as a voter. It's important to me as, a, as an Australian. And it will send a very strong message to future parliaments and governments that they have to take this seriously, that they have to respect the will of the Australian people on this. Um, that is why we know that referendums, they're not easy to win. We haven't taken the easy road here. We've taken the hard road, but we've taken it for a very clear reason because we need the Australian people, the voters, the bosses of this country to tell the politicians and the future governments why the voice is important to them and that they've got to take it seriously following the referendum. I think it's an opportunity for Australians to really demonstrate that they've understood the history of this country and to look forward positively with a way in which we can improve things for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and to make the country a more harmonious place for everyone to live in. It's as simple as that. I think that we also face a really unique opportunity in this country that right now we're, as First Nations people, we're unsure about whether Australians truly value that 65,000 years of history and culture. That yes vote is an overwhelming statement, not just to future parliaments about the existence of our voice, but to us directly. To say that all Australians who call this country home, see us, value us, acknowledge the history and the rich culture that we bring and truly appreciate it. I think that's a completely different feeling that we as First Nations people will feel. And I, I think that's, that's the uniting moment for us to go. We, we feel it. It's beyond just a, a seeing and a hearing and a you exist. It's a, we feel connected. Well, as I travel around the country, I get to talk to Australians from all walks of life, both Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples. And I've seen very clearly this, this sort of sense that we're in 2023. We're in the modern Australian nation. It is absolutely within our capabilities to very simply come together in a national vote, in a referendum, to recognise Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as, as the first peoples of this country. That is something that people feel increasing pride in sense that we are home to the oldest contiguous culture on earth. When we talk about real unity, the Australian, Australians are pretty pragmatic about this. 
um, we look at the situation facing far too many Indigenous peoples and go, well, we, while we have a life expectancy gap of eight years between Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and the non-Indigenous population, we can't really say we're genuinely, properly, in a practical way, unified. And people people want to be part of a change that actually gets to to really making a difference here. So that is why coming together, recognition, there's a lot of pride there, getting the voice done, getting the practical change. There's a lot of determination to see better outcomes. That is why this is something that all Australians can be part of. And we want you to be part of a big movement of Australian um, people getting behind the support. We should vote yes for the referendum because it's a way of saying status quo isn't good enough, that we can do better, and the way of doing better is to listen to what Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people say is the way forward for things that matter to them. Well, let's vote yes to finally, after 235 years, recognise Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as the first peoples of this country. That is something we know that we can do as a country. Let's vote yes to the voice for that practical change that so many of us want to see in the communities for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. We all get the chance to do that later on this year. Vote yes for the type of country that we want to be in 2023. One that we can all look each other in the eye, feel very proud to be Australians and know that we did something fantastic in achieving a successful yes vote in the referendum later on this year. And I say vote yes because it's about my family and my community and the young people I work with. It is about positively impacting their lives. The generation that is still yet to be born, it's about their lives and making the changes for that when they grow up, they have an amazing and they are proud of who they are, proud of their culture, proud of the country that they call home. I think that voting yes is about a new future. by Rod Goodben, Oxfam Australia, West Melbourne, NAM.